Good morning. Welcome to Grace and Truth for today. It is Thursday, May the 28th, and we are this week in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, and we're talking about best practices for the Christian life or best practices for Christian living. And of course, as a culture and as a society, uh, primarily, at least here in the state of Ohio, we've been opening up, and I've heard our governor saying a lot uh, about reopening and uh, doing so using the best practices. And so we're sort of borrowing from that theme, and uh, we're talking about uh, the best practices for Christian living, things that ought to be uh, in our lives, uh, growing, developing, uh, that, that really just aid and assist uh, in spreading the truth of the gospel. Uh, and so Galatians chapter number five, I think, is a great place to start. And on Tuesday, we, we talked about walking in the Spirit. And I don't, be, to be very frank, as a Christian, I don't know of a better practice uh, to live the Christian life than that, to walk in the Spirit. In fact, the Bible says that if we'll walk in the Spirit, uh, we, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so it really is a safeguard against uh, fulfilling uh, what our natural man uh, is. And uh, then we come to uh, verses 22 and 23. And listen to what the Bible says here. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And so the Holy Spirit gives us nine uh, specific fruit uh, that uh, can be grown in our lives through His divine uh, power and enablement. I, uh, I don't know about you, but in recent days, I have discovered, and I say recent days, I mean over the last several years, I've discovered um, a new development among shoppers uh, that their fruit and vegetables be organic. And uh, sometimes I even, I even hear that. They talk about organic milk and, and different things along those lines. And, um, and I, I began to think about this idea of organic. And uh, for those of you that may not be aware, organic as it pertains to fruit and vegetables, it just simply means that they were produced without the aid or the assistance uh, of chemicals or fertilizers. Uh, that they were just grown naturally, naturally. And I suppose we can understand why that would be coveted uh, for those who are purchasing their fruit and vegetables. Uh, sometimes we wonder, you know, what's in the food that we're eating? What kind of uh, chemicals, what kind of fertilizers were used to grow this? And so I can understand why someone would want uh, something that is organic. You know, I find that um, in my spiritual life, when I, when I walk in the Spirit, uh, He, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, produces within me real healthy, organic fruit uh, in my Christian life and in my walk. Uh, this, this fruit is revealed here in our text. And I want us to discover just some, uh, just some really elementary thoughts about the fruit of the Spirit and uh, the desire uh, for organic uh, fruit to grow in our lives as Christians. Let me just share with you three things. I like to do that. Uh, most of you are follow these. You know that there's usually three or four things that we share. And so let me just share them with you very quickly. Number one, uh, let me say this, that the Holy Spirit produces fruit in your life that your natural man could never produce. Now, that's an important, important thought. Uh, in other words, what we find in verses 22 and 23 can never, can never be produced in your flesh. It just can't be. It's impossible. Um, and and, and that's, that's an important element to consider. Uh, the natural man, his fruit is listed in this passage as well. We didn't take time to read it. Verses 19 to 21, he says, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And then he gives the list. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, the list goes on and on all the way through verse number 21 of things that are naturally produced when you live according to the flesh. And uh, none of us, none of us want to produce those things. Uh, they lead to problems and heartache. Some of them are actual crimes. He talks about murder. Uh, he talks about, uh, you know, stealing. And I mean, these things are against the law. And yet these are the things that your natural man will produce in and of itself. And when we start to think about love and joy and peace and long-suffering, we know that these things can never be produced in the natural man. In other words, the Holy Spirit must produce these things in our lives. In fact, I would say, I would take it so far as to say this, we talk often about miracles. And uh, sometimes we're frustrated that, you know, we can't, we can't heal people. 
you know, we read about how, uh, you know, people were, were given their sight restored back to them who were blind, others that were deaf who could hear because of the miraculous power that the Lord had, and certainly some of the Old Testament prophets and the apostles had. But I propose to you that one of the greatest miracles in all of the world is when sinners live like verses 22 and 23, because that's who we all are. We are all sinners who have been saved by grace. And so when me, when I as a sinner produce love and joy and peace and truth matters, I, know I don't produce those things, but when the Holy Spirit produces them within me, what a miraculous, miraculous event that is. And so the Holy Spirit, you need to understand this, best practice for Christian living, the Holy Spirit produces fruit that your natural man could never possibly produce. Let me say, secondly, living the Christian life apart from the Holy Spirit produces frustration. Living the Christian life apart from the Holy Spirit produces frustration. Here's what I mean by that. I know a lot of Christians. I know, I know myself. And there have been times in which I have tried to produce verses 22 and 23 in my life apart from the divine enablement of the Holy Spirit. I have tried to love in my own flesh. I have tried to have joy in my own flesh. I have tried to have peace in my flesh uh, without the Holy Spirit. I've tried, to, I've tried to force these things on my own without allowing him to grow them within me. And it is an utter and complete impossibility. And, and here's, here's what happens. Anything that I produce in my flesh is not real. It's, 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 it's makeshift. It's a fraud. It's, it's phony. And, and, and when it's exposed as such, when it doesn't hold up, when it doesn't last, I get frustrated and I just want to walk away altogether. And, um, and, and so what we need to be reminded of that, um, because there's, I know so many Christians that are trying to live the Christian life apart from the Holy Spirit. Uh, they're, they're depending upon their own flesh and it just doesn't work. It leads to frustration. It is not a best practice for Christian living to try to live the Christian life apart from the Holy Spirit. It only leads to frustration. Hey, there's a third one thing I want you to see here, and that is this. The fruit of the Spirit in me, this is, this is awesome. The fruit of the Spirit in me produces an appetite for it in others. Here's what I, here's what I mean. When I demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit in my life, in other words, when people, when people see real, organic, healthy fruit in my life, Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith, temperance. When they see those things and they realize that it's real, and how do they know it's real? Because it holds up under pressure. Uh, when, I have, when I have love, when I have joy, when I have peace in the midst of a pandemic, the world looks at me and they say, there's something different about him. And it produces, listen, it produces an appetite for that same thing in them. Uh, have, you ever, have you ever gone shopping in a grocery store? And you didn't, you didn't plan on buying a certain item, but it was presented in such a way that I've got to have that. It looks so good. <laughs> I think about when I've watched television, I like to watch sports, and a lot of times the, the, the pizza companies, uh, they know that people are sitting around, and what do people like to have when they're watching a ball game? They like to have a, a slice of pizza. Or they like to have a hamburger from you know Burger King or McDonald's or whatever. And they, and they present it in such a way that it makes you say, I've got to have that. Now we've all we've all ordered. <laughs> we've gone to the store. We've we've ordered off the menu board, and what we get looks nothing like what was presented there, right? But when it comes to the Christian life, if you and I if you and I will allow the Holy Spirit to produce these things in us, it's real, it's genuine, and people will look at us and they'll say, "I've got to have what he has. I've got to have what she has." And uh, boy, it, it really does. It produces an appetite. When I have organic fruit in my life that's produced not by myself, not by my own flesh, but produced by the Holy Spirit, others look at it and say, I've got to have that. I've got to have that. It looks so appetizing. Let me ask you this question. Are you producing an appetite for spiritual things in the lives of others? If not, if not, let's determine that we're going to, we're going to yield and submit our lives to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to produce those things in us that we could never produce in ourselves. Hey, best practice for Christian living, walk in the Holy Spirit. Best practice for Christian living is to produce, listen, to produce organic fruit in your life. You say, I can't do that. You're exactly right. And so that takes us back to where we were th Tuesday, and that is walking in the Spirit. So he can produce in us things that we could never produce 
in and of ourselves. I hope this has been a help to you. Uh, let's pray together and let's ask the Holy Spirit uh, to produce in us things that we could never produce in ourselves as we yield our lives to him. Holy Spirit of God, we thank you for your word and how it convicts us and how it challenges us and how it changes us. And Lord, we're asking, I'm asking for me personally today, Thursday, uh, Lord, uh, May the 28th, Lord, would you do a work in my life that I could, I could never do in, in and of myself? Lord, would you produce the things that are found in Galatians 5, love, and joy, and peace, and long-suffering, and gentleness, and meekness, and faith, and temperance? Lord, would you allow those things to grow organically? May they be produced by you, the living organism who's in me, who produces organically things in me that I could never possibly produce in myself. Lord, I am, I am dead. I'm a dead man. That's, that's what I am. I'm, I'm a natural man. I cannot produce these things. Only you can, and I pray that you would. Lord, I pray for our listener, for those who are viewing this today. I pray, Lord, that you would do similarly for them. Uh, Lord, that you would uh, help them, uh, bless them in a special way today, we pray in Jesus' name. Hey, thanks again for tuning in. We hope it's been a blessing to you. If it has been, as we always encourage you, to share it with others and to pass it along to someone else that they might be helped uh, by these few scriptural principles and thoughts. Thanks again for tuning in. God bless you. Hope you have a great day.